And Killian so far, it's not even just he's playing bad. He's playing abysmal. You gotta be able to play better than they are defensively. Cade, I, I get it. His jumper looks a little different. But Cade, Sadiq Bey, John Beeline ruined everybody. But you saw early in the game them throw a lob to Isaiah Stewart. He didn't get it. That was Durant. He's slamming that thing down every time. I struggle to watch Kevin Knox. Throw Joseph, him in there, Corey too. Joseph looks like a dude who just started working out at Planet Fitness. Jeff? Uh, You're my guy. Yeah. Pistons, I look to you always when we have these conversations. <laughs> guy. We talk about... I'll give you an example, because I want to kind of like lead you in here a little bit. We talk about Jaden Ivey. Right. What is his game, right? His ability to attack the basket. He has so far shown he can shoot the three-pointer, right? Mid-range, he will develop, I think, over time. I'm not too concerned, but uh, there are things you can point out to me and say, Adam, this is how it's working. This is his game. What is Killian Hayes' game? Because all I ever see him do is dribble up the court, take a bad shot, turn it over, or every three, four attempts dishes out a good ball, and they get a basket from it. Like, I don't see the offensive game. It's not there, and I want to be patient. He hasn't played 100 games yet in the NBA, but kick rocks. <laughs> kick rocks, man. It's, it's pathetic right now. I'm sorry. So, so I'll – for Killian, it's tough because this has been a three-year leash, essentially, with Killian Hayes. And Pistons fans, to their credit, have been very patient with him, including myself, because you see what he can do. But you're always hoping that his offensive game develops to the point where he can be a legitimate, your seventh, eighth man off the bench that can give you all the things he provides with his passing, is what he can do defensively. But also, you need some offense. You've got to be able to knock down shots. You've got to be able to play off ball. And Killian so far, it's not even just he's playing bad. He's playing abysmal. And that's the issue. But for the bigger picture, and I want to give Pistons fans a little glimmer of hope because the team that I often compare this, this current team to is the 2019-2020 Memphis Grizzlies, a team that finished 34-39 and on the season. That was their first year with John Morant. Their over-under before the season was 27 and a half. Do you know how they started through their first 10 games? They, had, they were, well, through nine games, they were two and nine. Or 11 games, excuse me, 2-9. and nine. So, again, I'm not giving them any excuses, but for that Grizzlies team to start 2-9 and nine and finish with 34 wins, I'm not saying it's not possible, but what I am saying is you got to be able to play better than they are defensively. That's the biggest issue. If you look at this Memphis team, um, they started, they were 2-7, and seven, excuse me, through nine games. Then they started 3-7, and 4-7, 5-7, 5-8. Five and seven, five and eight. See how the wins were starting to come along after those first handful of games. That's what the Pistons need to do. You, you, eventually, you got to play some defense. And, and through the first couple games, it's been atrocious. And it doesn't help that Killian Hayes isn't providing anything. Sadiq Bey has been inconsistent. I mean, this is not even inconsistent, but just... Because it's not like he's shooting bad. It's two for five on the, uh, in the game for, in 27 minutes played. You just can't do that. But, again, a lot of things need to happen. And Cade, I, I get it. His jumper looks a little different. Um, I'm not going to overreact this early, but for people that are saying coming out of Oklahoma State in the summer league, his jumper, his jumper was different. Uh, I'm, see, I'm, I'm curious to see how that progresses. I'm not going to say John Beeline ruined him. John Beeline ruined everybody. I'm not going that far. But they got to play better. And for, for them, again, I'm going to re repeat this point. If you want to be on that same trajectory as the Memphis Grizzlies, for a team like the Memphis Grizzlies to start 2-7 and seven and then go on a three-game winning streak, that's what the Pistons got to do. I, I don't, it's not about the, it, the individual players are important. They got to get better, but they got to play collectively. And uh, they have yet to do that so far. So we'll see. But I'm concerned about Killian Hayes. That's probably the only player I'm legitimately concerned about. I'm not concerned about Cade, Sadiq Bey. But Killian Hayes is playing for essentially his job, his future in Detroit, and his future really with any other team in the NBA. So he has to play better, no question about it. All right. I, I don't have much to offer you on Killian because I'm kind of checked out on him at the moment. But I'll ask you this, Sadiq Bey. We called him streaky at times last year, even the year prior. But really down the stretch last year, he became a formidable guy. You were looking at 20, 21 points a game going into this year. This is a guy you thought would give you 20 a night. And again, I know Ivy's a rookie starting on the court. Right. I know it's new. Bogdanovich is new. Isaiah Stewart playing the way he does now is new for this team. 
and I don't want to judge them all so early in the year. But Jeff, Sadiq at times, again, I, I, this is a theme on this team. There, there, is no, there is no offensive game plan. It's kind of like, all right, it's Kate's turn to dribble it up the court and make a decision. It's Ivy's turn, and Sadiq is just standing there in the corner. Right. And then whenever He's, they decide to give him the ball, he decides, well, am I shooting or am I dribbling and penetrating the basket? Like, I don't get this offense. It doesn't have any rhythm to it. And that's why it's inconsistent. That's why they go two, three, four minutes right. without a bucket every other quarter. And that's hard. I mean, it really is. It's hard for Sadiq to have four shots through three quarters, and then you expect him in the fourth quarter to be knocked down. Like, he, that rhythm isn't there for him. And, and for Killian, or excuse me, for Cade and Jade and Ivy, for people freaking out, I, I, I said this repeatedly throughout the offseason. They're going to need time to be able to play together. This isn't an easy match for these two. They have very similar games in which they both do need the basketball. But you've got to give them more time to be able to adjust and be able to find, you know, where does Jaden like the ball? Where does Cade like the ball? When is the right time for Cade to bring up the ball? When is the right time for Jaden to bring up the ball? You've got to find these things out, and they're going to find it out, I promise. The difference is, and I'll tell you, between the Pistons and the Lions, is the Lions play 17 games. The Pistons and Red Wings play 82 that's why you need to be patient. It's not in the 17-game sample size, which the NFL, you see teams turn it around very quickly. The Pistons, they got to play better. They got to play better defensively. They got to shoot the ball better. I get all that. But for Cade and for, for Jay Nivey, those two need more time than just four games. So that's my counterpoint to that. And for Sadiq Bey, the only concern I have is how does Bogey, uh, Bogdanovich fit with Sadiq Bey? Because it seems like ever since Bogey got here, like you said, he's been taking a lot of these shots. Sadiq's kind of taking a back seat. And, that, and we, I, I thought Sadiq would average 18 this year and be consistently at that number. He's got to find a way to work himself. Well, or Dwayne has to find Kane a way to work the himself in the offense. More points a game. Fewer assists slightly. The rebounds down slightly. I'll just be honest with you. Time to start Duren at the five? No? Are you opposed to it? Because Isaiah Stewart is, I don't want to be mean. He's not bad. He's, he's just playing, I think he's playing the wrong position personally. He's playing uh, below his level right now. That's fair. Right. I think he is slightly better than what he's shown. But Duran gives you six and eight off the bench last yeah, night. I, I promise you, you give him 28 minutes, 32 minutes, he's probably a 12 and 10 guy, 12 and 12 guy. You probably get three additional possessions just from offensive rebounds with him on no the No question. So, and not to mention what they do offensively. You saw early in the game them throw a lob to Isaiah Stewart. He didn't get it. That was Duran. He's slamming that thing down every time. So that's the, that's the stuff that Duran provides with his size and his athleticism. That's why we preach. Stu's a four. He really is. I, I, I Listen, I, playing him at the small ball five at times is fine. But to start at the five, you saw Porzingis abuse them in the first quarter because of that lack of size. So yeah. Duran, although he's the youngest player in the NBA and he needs time to develop physically, you can make a case he could start right now. And that's the impact he has. Whether you like Duran off the bench or you like him starting, the Pistons do lack size and teams are going to continuously punish them. So, uh, I mean, imagine when you face a Joel Embiid. It ain't going to be pretty. So they're going to have to find that out. You're right. Jalen Duran. He's, game by game, he's slowly convincing me. If he can stay out of foul trouble, um, if he can be in the right spots, especially in the pick-and-roll defense, because he does struggle in there at times, which every rookie does, you can make a case for Duran. I mean, 25 games in, I'll say that. I mean, people talk about end of the year. He could be squeezing in that start lineup quicker than a lot of people think. And if they're not losing games, start them. Or if they're not winning games, start them. It, it's not going to hurt you. Well, are they, real, are they realistically going to win games? What'd you say? Are they realistically going to win a ton of games where they're oh, 37, no, no, 38, no. 41? I'd say max 33, no. 32. But look at their bench. Their bench is getting outscored every night. Right, and that's kill and that's, that's partially problem. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this too. The Pistons, I said this uh, yesterday when we were talking about it, they miss Bagley bad, bad, and Burks. Because Bagley, we, Bagley can, is another guy who can get you 15, 20 every other night. On top of that, he brings size. And if he were to come off the bench, 
there's your 15 a night off the bench. So they're, they're definitely hurting without Bagley. You'd love 15 a night off the bench, right? Because last night you only got 25 <laughs> points from the bench. <laughs> and, and Killian had a donut. It is a big difference, it though. Is, when you lose yeah. a game, what, 120 to 99? Right, yeah. That is the difference of being in the game competitive, uh, competitively for all four quarters. That's the reality. And whenever that first unit is off the court, it goes down offensively. Yeah, it's, and that's, that's Killian Hayes. Corey Throw Joseph. him in there, Corey too. Corey Joseph looks like a dude who just started working out at Planet Fitness. He looks like an Oompa Loompa. Well, okay. He's playing basketball he's, he's, professionally. He's solid, but he's not in the position. We don't need him to be. That should be Burks. Burks should be what doing what Corey Joseph's doing. That should be Burks playing off the bench. Gosh. But I'm with you. And Kevin Knox playing minutes? I mean, Kevin Knox is, is terrible. I mean, he really is. I, I, can't, I, sh- right now I struggle to watch team. Kevin Knox. Um, but, again, it's early in the season. You gotta. I hate saying this because it's been the theme this entire you know year. But you gotta give them more time. I'm sorry, you just do. If they don't fix things defensively, I'm 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 right there with you guys. Jump on the Dwayne Casey train of giving getting him out of town. But it's way too early. Uh, you gotta give these guys a chance to fix it themselves as players. Because it's not like Dwayne's going into practice and being like, you know what, guys, let's not play defense. You know what? Just we'll, we'll, screw defense. You know what? We, we're not even going to shoot the ball in practice. Actually, don't don't shoot and don't play defense. And then yeah, we're good. We'll, we'll, yeah, we we can go out to the Wizards and, and play at Washington. That's not what happens. Like, it, so again, give these players a chance to turn it around. And if they start on doing that, and it's ugly, like I said, Memphis Grizzlies started out two and seven, two and seven, but they won three straight and they able to win thirty four at the end of the year. So you know got to give them a chance. I'll tell you what. Second hour of the show, we're going to talk about Halloween costume ideas for everybody on the staff. Can we get Rogelio to dress up as an Oompa Loompa? And then he could be Corey Joseph for, for Halloween.